Hello everybody, doing another video today of another Dell Power Edge. This will be the third Dell Power Edge that I've done, but the second that I've uploaded because the other one that I'm doing is on an indefinite hold due to parts issues. The issue with that is it needs a video card, and it, it's a very specific video card. It needs an NVIDIA VGA only video card, and I have exactly none of those so yep uh, this is the Dell Power Edge we're doing today this is a Dell Power Edge 1600 SC it is a bit of a lower end model from the 1800 or the 2600 but I think it was designed with that in mind so it's not a big deal this I think I replaced this with a DVD ROM drive but I'm not sure about that so I can't say for certain has a standard floppy drive which how no one uses a sticker from the previous owner that says DC DNS wins and then that IP address so that was their IP address at one time you can see the drive indicator LED the power LED the power button and the health status button thing as well as tons of holes in the front cover to allow air in has a singular Z on and a lock on the front which I do not have the keys for unfortunately would have been much better if I did have the keys the case opens standard and comes off as well. Bit different locking system though. It has these little hinges right there you shove onto this part and that sort of holds it in. This one is a bit more dusty than the other one, but that's all right. It has a singular Seagate 72 or uh, 10k.7 and that is identical to the other drive to the drive in the um, Power Edge 2600 and I actually had that in a dual drive config with the this one in there but I needed this drive for this one because it was a U320 SCSI and U320 SCSI drives online are to me a little bit too expensive to be worth the buy so I just kind of use that. The side panel comes off in a standard manner as with all Dell Power Edges of the time period. As per usual there's the setup guides and everything of the like to show you how to use and replace and stuff like that in the Dell Power Edge. So this is the inside of the Power Edge, what is the model? 1600 SC. The inside most of the components are easily removable. This fan is easy to remove you just get that out of the way and then pull it out snaps right back in place very easily. Um, that does not have any vibration protection, so it does vibrate a little bit, but that's not a big deal. You can see the singular mere 2 gigahertz Xeon processor, the I think 512 meg, let me get the flashlight, the 512 meg of DDR, and there's the Xeon processor again if you didn't see it the first time, and there's the slot for the second PGA 604 Xeon processor. I probably said the PGA part wrong, but that's fine. Um, you can see the IDE buses down here, as well as the U320 SCSI connector there. And in here, you can see it has no cards installed. And I'm actually verifying that this time so I don't make a derp like I did with the um, 1800. You can see the SCSI backplane right there, and the back fan. And up here is the standard power supplies for the thing. I did check it this time. These power supplies spit out 450 watts each. So quite a bit less than the 2600 or the 1800, but that's perfectly fine because this is a bit lesser of a model than those two ever will, what would have been. So Now we're going to get under the power up. And just to contrast from the Power Edge 1800 and its style of power on, I will show you that the fan does not turn on automatically with the power supply when I unplug in power. And I can tell you that power is applied because if you look over in the Gemini power supply, you can see that the LED is lit. So now I'm going to plug it in. You'll hear a relay click, but I think that'll be it. And the light lights up, and you can see it has power grid. The relay clicks as soon as the power is applied, and on the 1800 I think it does a little bit of power on self-testing in that regard and checks the power supply before it clicks the relay. 
So I'm going to put the side panel back on, the front panel back on, and we're going to get going. Okay, so what we're going to be using to test this precision electronic device, aka the Dell PowerEdge 1600SC, is a Samsung, Samsung SyncMaster 914V. This monitor absolutely trumps the Dell monitor that I've been using to test these so far. So maybe the image quality will be a lot better than what you've been getting. So, now I'm going to get to the power on. I'm going to press the power button now, and you'll hear the fans. It's not loud. Yep, see? Not loud. As per the use, I'm using my really bad Hewlett Packard Toper keyboard that is so low quality I can't even stand it. And the Logitech laser mouse that's really not any better. You can see the startup screen here with the Dell Power 1600SC logo. It's testing the RAM. I don't remember how much there is off the top of my head, but maybe we'll show it on the next screen. You can see there's one 2K megahertz processor, aka 2 gigahertz, and 512 uh, L2 cache. So, yeah, not much. Just wanted to let you hear the drive spin up there so you can actually hear the thing. And I'm sure this has some LXDE edition of Linux on it. And it's going to tell me that the cover was previously removed, but hey, I don't care. It's just me. Yeah, here you can see the grub menu loading. And it's Crunchbang, actually. Crunchbang GNU Linux. So, it's really worse than... <laughs> it's worse than LXD. And I'm almost completely certain that this is the best I could get on this. Because the um, graphics, uh, integrated graphics, is so bad on this. It's just not even funny. It was really not designed for uh, graphics capability at all. You can see, like, it refreshes the screen down as it goes. So it's just terrible. I actually do have a better monitor than this, I think. It is an HP uh, VS something or other, but it's, I think, a little bit smaller in terms of physical dimensions and has the exact same resolution, but it auto-adjusts most of the time automatically and powers up a lot quicker. I kind of like it a little bit better than the Sigmaster 914V, but this is still a very good product nonetheless. So my username is just my name, and my password is my standard password. Unless I decided to deviate from that. Yeah, you can see the screen refreshing as it goes. Yep, and we're here in the hilariously uneventful Linux install. But I think I can at least go into LibreOffice, so I can show you that it's just LibreOffice 3, so it's a bit old actually. So, yep, there's LibreOffice, and there's quite a noise coming from this right now. It's getting worse. So I don't know what that's about, but yeah, that's about it. I'm going to shut this down, and that'll be it. Not much to show on this silly little Dell Power, except maybe the BIOS. So I think I'll show that after, and I'll just cut to that right now. So here we are in the Dell PowerEdge 1600SC BIOS. It's really not that interesting. It accurately reports the date, which is really interesting. It has a full, full 1 gig of ECC DDR RAM, so there you go. It has the 8 megabyte frame buffer, and I have figured out, since I'm apparently too stupid to have figured it out before, that the speed at, or well, capability of the graphics processor is not tied to the amount of memory it has. I kind of knew that with gaming sort of processors, GPU processors, but with one of these, I don't think that really occurred to me because I kind of almost thought that they were the best they could already get, but eh, I don't know. OS install mode. Now that is a thing where it limits the amount of memory to, I think, like 256 megabytes if you're going to install an OS, and I don't exactly know 
why that's needed. You can see here it says logical processor, and I think what that means is hyperthreading. So it'll have, quote unquote, two processors instead of one. That's what hyperthreading is, yay. And it's called logical because there isn't two processors. Remember when I took off the side panel, there was only one. Yeah, so there you go. You can still assign PCI IRQ numbers on this, which, you know, cool beans, question mark? I don't know why I would want to do that exactly, but, you know, whatevs. You can see the PCI X bus information, and there's nothing in there, so you're not going to get much out of it. So down here you can see that it'll keep the keyboard numlock on on startup, which is in fact true. And it will report keyboard errors if need be, which, you know, only would work if you had a PS2 keyboard in and not one of these little poopy do USB keyboards. Uh, so you can set an asset tag, which is not set. And well, I guess you can't set it. Okay, well, yeah, that's about it. I think there might be a more up to date version of that, but I wouldn't think so. I think what I might do is since Crunchbang Linux is probably the most limited thing in the world, I will do something more interesting with this and we'll have a follow-up video. Yay! So that's, yeah, that's about it for this time. Uh, thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed or appreciated the video, please make sure to rate it accordingly. If you flat out hated the video, then just go ahead and dislike it and, you know, give me some feedback if you feel like it. So that's, yeah, that's it. Thank you. And, uh, goodbye.